Freelance coding is one of the best ways to make money, especially as a beginner. But it's tough to get into, it's difficult to land clients, and even when you do, it's tough to know how to price it, and there's so many challenges when it comes to breaking into freelancing. Today, I'm sitting down with an expert, someone who's actually built a successful freelance coding career, and asking him all of the questions that you guys wanna know in terms of how to get into this as fast as possible. Nikolai, thank you for joining me, and let's talk about breaking into freelancing. Yeah, sure. My pleasure to be here. Sweet. So can you give kind of a quick intro? You know, how did you get into freelancing? What do you do right now? I know you have a YouTube channel. Maybe you can uh, shout that out as well. Yeah, for sure. So my name is Nicola Nielsen. I have a YouTube channel doing a bunch of different freelance work. Pretty much everything, courses, like investing and so on, pretty much is trying to do everything in life. But uh, I actually started out my journey with, with freelancing. Um, I was doing university, uh, doing my degree. I started with freelancing build my YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel like, like started out where I wanted to create something like instead of like taking notes, writing notes and so on in the courses, like I couldn't really, I didn't really like going to the lectures, the traditional way of education and so on. So I just thought about, okay, why don't you just like make video lectures? I just get home from school, like do a summary of the lectures and all that. And then just put it on YouTube, put the summaries up there, basically just make the projects in school, put them out there as well. Like the most important thing as we're also going to talk about is like, we need to get our work out there. It doesn't really matter. As, as I usually say, like it doesn't really matter how smart you are like if you're not out there if people cannot see your work who you are and so on it, it doesn't really matter at the, at the end so that's kind of like how i started out in the start with it like getting into youtube when you start to get into youtube like people will start to reach out to you you'll start building your own network and so on as we're going to talk about like your personal branding and so on and people act like start to reach out to you so this is actually like how i recommend like getting into freelance ai and so on because most people they think okay i should just reach out to people ask them for projects and so on but it's more about like building a personal brand once you have that you have a very huge competitive advantage getting into like different jobs getting opportunities and people act like start to reach out to you yeah that makes a lot of sense so in terms of like going back to kind of the very beginning for you like when did you start coding and from the time you started coding when did you get your first freelance gig like can you walk me through that journey like what did you need to learn first i know you mentioned ai and i know that you do specifically like ai development and you're kind of in the ai field so how did you get into that did you start just with ai or like did you start with basic programming just walk me through that journey yeah for sure so i actually started out with uh, robotics robotic engineering um, i got my bachelor's in that so we got introduced to some computer vision ai on the bachelor coding as well but still on like a very basic level i haven't done any coding coding before I started university. So it was like, like kind of late in my in my career. I was all, always interested in tech, coding, like play computer games and so on as well. So I, I think that helped a bit, but start of university, started coding, C++, Python and so on, like very basic. And then basically just got interested in creating projects instead of just a traditional way of education. I started to like learn from projects. And I was even like an average student, like below, like very bad grades on the bachelor and all that before I got into my master's. I didn't spend any time on master's just doing freelance projects. I learned so much from doing research on YouTube, looking up new stuff, like making LinkedIn posts, just staying up to date with the news research and so on. And I like learned way more from that compared to like, like the traditional education so that helped me a lot I started to do freelance projects like all of them were coming through my YouTube like I got some freelance projects like five hours per week ten hours per week and so on so that's kind of like how it started I really never reached out to anyone about freelance work they just like gradually just came in um, as my channel grow but also like just my exposure on uh, social media in general but also just building clients like it's so important to build clients build relationships connections and so on because if you get one good relationship like they're just going to like talk with other people you're going to expand your network mm -hmm. so that's going to uh, that's going to help you Tonya. So while you were in school doing your masters or finishing your bachelor's, you were landing freelance clients at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So I was actually like working like full time. I had like contract based work full time while I was doing a master's and so on. So I could pretty much spend like no time with it. I got like the best grades and so on. Like I went from like getting the worst grades, focusing on the school, for, focusing on like just sitting at the lectures and so on to not even like attending the classes. And I got like the best grades just because like we got into AI. So the master's work was way more about AI, machine learning, computer vision and so on, which is my field. I just had so much interest in it. So I think it's really important to like find your passion and then everything just, it just feels like it comes naturally and it just like scales over time. Of course you have to put in a lot of work. Like I work a lot, like like you need to put in like 80, 100 hour weeks and so on if you really want to, to get to the top. So definitely requires commitment, but I think like the most important thing is just consistency. Like find your passion, be consistent and then like, my only advantage over like most other people is basically just being committed, like act like just commit to it, stay on track, just keep doing it. Like even, even if you find your passion, it's not fun doing like every single day. Sometimes you just want to do stuff that you don't want to, but yeah, at the end of the day, 
that's uh, that's how life is. For sure. And you mentioned picking a niche. This is something yeah. I always say to people too when they're getting started. Like, okay, yeah, you got to learn the fundamentals. Of course, like you said, you know, you learn the basic coding yeah. skills. But beyond that, in order to be employable in the market and provide value, you need to be good at one specific thing. For sure. Right. In my case, when I started out, I was actually making games in Python. If you know the Pi game module, I'm not sure if you've heard of it. Yeah. I used to just make games doing that, and that's how I started freelancing. I wasn't making as much money as you, but I was making maybe a few hundred dollars every single month, like finishing people's yeah. homework assignments in Pi game. So that was the niche that I went in, into, even though it was really, really specific. But for you, you picked AI. So can you talk to me a little bit about like what your specific area of expertise is? And I know you have some kind of program as well where you teach like no. AI specific development. So can you cover maybe like what is in that program? What do you teach? And why is that what you're teaching people in order to get like a freelance coding career? Yeah, for sure. So I actually started out my year like, like four years ago before like all the AI hype sure. and, and all that now. Like a lot of people want to get into AI engineering now and need to know like, okay, how can we integrate AI into our software systems and so on? It's definitely like in that direction the future is going as well. So yeah, it's, it's really important that you start out with a niche because like if you're just going to go with like create Python tutorials and so on, like how I'm going to start out and compete with a, with a guy like you, like it's, it's very tough, very competitive. So you need to find a niche and so on. But also when you find a niche, like when people are looking up stuff on the internet, like searching for specific problems and so on they have like you just need to get up there like if you do youtube videos if you do like just put your work out there and people will search for that specific problem they have like like just get you at the top they will reach out to you and that is the, like the way that i get most of my freelance work so i have my ai career program where I basically just teach my system like how i did it as well and so on because i, I didn't really do anything exceptional i just put in the work stay consistent and so on of course you need to do that but yeah inside the ai career program basic basic ai most of it is actually like how to build a freelance business but also i got the videos i got courses about like how to land ai machine learning jobs so we both cover the technical aspects of it i have a bunch of different technical courses that you can use directly it not doesn't really focus too much on the theoretical stuff more the practical stuff how can we create projects from from scratch how can we create projects that we can actually like put out there into the real world because many people as as i say in some of my videos like so many people they focus like most of the time on actually like the theory and so on also from the traditional education and there's a huge gap going from that into the corporate world getting into actually like solving business problems and so on which is at the end of the day it is the most essential thing. Like everything is about making money, solving problems, helping people and all of that. So there's a huge gap going from traditional education to the corporate world. So I'm trying to like minimize that gap with the AI career program, also teach people. Don't focus like 80% of your time on the theoretical stuff because when you get out into the real world, like it's only 10 to 20% of the work. Like we just use the stuff, we use the frameworks available, basically just take all the frameworks, we glue them together and then we just try to solve business use cases as fast as possible. So that's really important to focus on them. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's what I say too, like you have to actually build stuff right yeah. you have to go hands-on like it's cool especially in ai a lot of people are good at the math they're good at the theory you know they sit there in the classroom and they can answer all the questions yeah. correctly yeah. but when it comes to actually providing value and in integrating ai building a system in the real world or even just with software engineering in general that's where they fail i even had a lot of people comments on one of my recent videos saying hey like i feel like i know all of this stuff i did really well in school but when it comes to building a project i'm just completely stuck i don't know where to start that's because they haven't actually applied the knowledge and it should be really 80 percent of the time you're actually working upon the other 20% of the time, you're kind of fine tuning the theory and learning those new skills. So with that in mind, what are some other common mistakes you see beginners making when they're trying to break into freelancing? I know they haven't maybe uh, done it as many projects or applied it real world, but beyond that, maybe from the business side, getting clients, like what are the mistakes and struggles most people are having? Yeah, so, so I think the most, the biggest problem people have is basically the consistency. They give up too fast, pretty much. It doesn't matter if you're doing freelance, what you're getting into, like most people, they just give up. Like if you don't succeed in one week, two weeks, and so on they basically just end up giving up and i feel like it's because some people they approach it in the wrong way it's not like get rich quick scheme or anything like it takes time like you're, you're spending five years just getting a degree like getting a master's and so on so you can't expect to transform your career like your whole life and so on in two weeks and or even like just one year it's like a, a whole process that you need to go through but at the end of the day if you're trying to proceed this it is the exact same if you're building a personal brand if you're doing freelancing and so on everything just goes hand in hand it takes time but even if i start my youtube i couldn't even imagine any of the possible abilities and opportunities that I have now getting all the freelance work sponsorship like getting tons of different job opportunities and so on as well as so also get like a lot of full-time position offers and so on basically just stay consistent that's the biggest problem that people have but also they approach it in the wrong way so most people they think okay I can just like write to someone I, I can do these projects and so on maybe you have a portfolio most people they don't even have like a LinkedIn profile when they're starting out with freelancing when you're talking about github your github is empty maybe not well documented you just have like a few code files or unorganized inside your github 
repo. So if you don't have all those things, it's all about like standing out in, in the inside the AI program. I also talk about the modern day suit. So it's a really important aspect. So instead of like traditional way, like the lawyers and so on, they pull up in a suit. We also need to do that in the tech world, especially when you're doing freelancing and so on, because we can just see we have all these setups with the cameras and so on. When I have my main camera and I go into a meeting, turn on the microphone, I have the lighting, I have the best cameras and so on. So the first thing that people mention when I go into a meeting is basically just my setup. So they get a good first impression of me. And if you're like just doing job interviews and so on, you don't have to do much. You can just use your phone, just act like just think about these things because it makes a huge difference at the end. And some of these things are the stuff that I'm teaching inside the AI career program as well. Because let's say there's 10 guys like doing interviews and so on. I pull up with camera, good camera, good lighting conditions and so on. Like I'm just going to stand out right off the go compared to all the other ones just pulling up their laptop. Maybe they're better than technical. Maybe they can answer more questions and so on. But again, like most interviews is more about like getting first impressions and so on. 100%. People judge you really quickly. And I always say it doesn't matter how good you are if you can't showcase that. Yeah, no. I think a lot of programmers especially struggle with that skill. They might really be good at the technical skills, but they don't have that confidence. They're not great at presenting themselves. No. Like you said, they don't consider appearance and first impressions. And that's 80% of the battle. After that, if you can pass the technical stuff, you're fine, but you got to get past that first struggle. Now, if someone wanted to get into freelancing, let's say that they, you know, they picked a niche, maybe they're good at like Python web development or something, for example. What are some things that they can do like right now that can help them land clients? Like the main issue I always hear people asking about is, well, I can't find clients. I can't find someone to pay me. They only want to pay me $5 now or no. I'm competing with all these people on Fiverr. Like what can they start doing right now to improve yeah. their chances of getting clients? Yeah, sure. So most people, they actually just start up mentioning like Upwork, Fiverr and so on. Like don't even go in that direction. It doesn't matter where you're from in the whole world. Like it's just so competitive. Like people are going to lowball you. There will always be someone doing it, doing it cheaper than you. So I don't really recommend those platforms. Like just stay away from it. It's way easier. Like also I have some guys from the AI career program within like two months, three months. They put in a lot of time. Like they were really dedicated. But just putting out like if you want to get clients, as fast as possible, like go to LinkedIn, put posts out there about projects that you have done and so on as well. Like you can find videos, you can do like research, you can find research papers, you can find pretty much different like architectures, make some nice visualizations and so on, put them out on LinkedIn and then it will basically just start to grow like that. And LinkedIn is a very good platform to get started with. You don't have to do YouTube videos, you don't have to do blog posts and so on. Of course, it's nice to do, but if you're not comfortable like sitting in front of a camera doing YouTube videos and so on, of course, that takes time to scale as well. The fastest way is basically just like build your network, focus on really building your network because you, you could build one relationship and that can like transform your whole life you can reach out to people don't just like reach out to them and like just expect them to give you work right off the bat like you can't just say hello hey hey hey, i want i want some work like that's not going to work like you need to build a, like a real relationship but the most important put your work out there stop build your followers and so on like once you get to like 5 10k followers on linkedin i'll probably probably say like if you have it organic you're pretty much set for life in, in your industry because uh, you get so so many opportunities so much network that you can reach out to so if you're just focus on that you're pretty much uh, you're pretty much good yeah social media is like a hack when it okay. comes to those things and so many people don't consider it or they think that you need hundreds of thousands of followers I can relate to what you were saying. When I was starting out with my YouTube channel, I got tons of freelance work, even at 2,000 subscribers, 3,000 subscribers from a LinkedIn uh, account that had you know 1,000 followers. You just have to demonstrate your competency, right? And actually display, okay, I know how to do yeah. this thing. I'm really good in this area, but people don't know that if it's just on your resume, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone lies on their resume. Everyone says they're amazing, but if you can actually go out there and prove that you know what you're doing, post a really great project, have an amazing portfolio link, go on LinkedIn and post something no. actually interesting that people wanna look at, you'll be surprised how many people find that and reach out to you specifically. Everyone always needs like really specific things done and it's hard to find people that are willing to no. do that, no. especially in those niches because all the people that know how to do that probably already have a job or sure. aren't like, you know, posting on social media. So if you can kind of demonstrate your niche expertise, even when you're just getting started out, it might take a few months to build yeah. a following, but I guarantee yeah. it's gonna be great. And it's, it's all about like getting clients to reach out to you because like if you reach out to them, you don't really have the advantage. Like when we are doing negotiations, it's also business. So you're looking learn a ton from doing freelance or like just building a personal brand and so on. You learn all the business aspects, like how do you negotiate? How do you set up like a product pipeline? How do you communicate with people? Like how do you stand out and so on? Because it's all about at that at the end of the day. So it's really important that you focus on that as well. Great. So one of the last questions I want to ask you then is related to pricing, which you just touched on. When you're taking on a new freelancing project, how do you determine the pricing? Are you doing it per hour? Are you doing it per project? What are the different factors? Can you walk me through and some tips you can give? 
Yeah, for sure. So again, it's it's all about like getting the clients to reach out to you because then you have the competitive advantage. You will not get low balled. The more clients and so on, like of course you need to start lower until you actually like start to build clients. You get too much work in and so on. You can always adjust the basically just adjust the pricing and so on. When I started out, I just did like hourly work, so I'll just agree in like a number of hours. Pretty much the one that works the best is just divided into chunks of hours. When you want to do the pricing, just start low, and you can always like scale it over time. Like the the most important thing is actually like have clients. Like if you have no clients, it doesn't really matter. Like it's better to just like do 10 20 30 dollars like i started out with around like 25 dollars per hour for a project and that's even like only two years ago now i'm charging like could be all the way up to 250 depending on like project number of hours and so on so when you get to that stage like it could probably take like a year two years something like that to get to that stage but i even have like someone from the ai career program my whole dream and my whole goal and so on is to build the ai career program into like a coding agency as well so i already have some guys inside that program helping me out with some of the freelance projects that i have because i've done like hundreds different freelance projects at some point it's not like that fun to just like keep doing the same project over and over again or like smaller projects so i basically just have a few guys in there just help me out and just send the project over to them so that's also a very good basically just a very good opportunity from the ai career program because some of these guys like they just put in two months of work they get work from me now like they made the program back like in, in two weeks or something like yeah. that but they also get all the other aspects like they're growing their linkedin profiles some of them even have like a few k subscribers now like or followers starting out with pretty much zero so yeah pricing like just start low you can always scale it once you have clients and so on like there's not really any limit to it either like of course you can like charge like thousand dollars per hour but if you have enough clients if you have too much work you can just like pretty much just up the pricing but the way that works the best just iterative approach tell the client's approach so the most important thing is also to basically just tell the approach gain confidence be professional you have your good setup you talk with the clients you just tell them okay this is the process this is how i do it and they will get way more confidence in you as well even if you have done no project at all if you just know the structure the pipeline how you actually like do projects like they'll just believe you've done hundreds of projects because you just say this is the process i do 50 percent upfront 50 percent delivery i want to do it in different phases we have iterative process research first to start with we start with 20 hours then we go from there we do evaluations and so on if you just sit down and, and say that to a client like they just get way more confident in you compared to if you're just setting with someone not knowing how to act like do this and also inside the aircraft program i just have templates for all of that because it's basically just the same thing it's just a process you just need to be able to tell it to the client gain confidence and that's very important yeah you need to act like a business right you don't yeah. want to be like that yeah. random guy no. that they found off the side of the road no, who's no. going to like finish a programming project for you like you need to demonstrate that you actually are able to complete the project you know exactly what it takes to do it and this is the process right if you outline that then people just want to work with you and honestly half the battle in this industry is just being professional responding on time and giving people confidence that you do actually know what you're doing i mean it's really no different in any industry but if you can be professional immediately people just want to work with you because they know stuff's going to get done so what i really took away from this is that especially getting clients you need to make sure that you have some kind of presence you need to be demonstrating your work it doesn't need to be through youtube videos or blog posts but you need to be putting it out there and sharing it publicly so that people can find you if people can find Find you then you have the competitive advantage you now have some level of inbound even if it's small and that will allow you to start growing the client list and then you can get into all of the factors where you learn about pricing you get more experience and you can scale it iteratively sure. is that a fair summary yeah for sure that's uh that's very good and even if you don't succeed like you don't need to get like the 200 250 dollars per hour like if you just proceed all these things like building a personal brand starting freelancing knowing how to communicate with people and so on like the worst case scenario is that you're still a better version of yourself you you will make money you just need to put in time be consistent and so on but worst case scenario you're like you'll get into business you'll learn some different stuff in different areas of life and you will only be a very better version of yourself amazing well thank you very much man if you guys want to check out the ai career program you can do that from the link in the description i have an affiliate link down there if you want to check out nikolai has a youtube channel as well i think about a hundred thousand subscribers maybe a little bit more where he shares a ton of value especially in the ai field so definitely check him out